Nice. What is happening people? It is Uncle Nick here and as you can see there's a little bit of change of scenery. I'm actually just behind the gym with Kona. We are talking split jerks today ladies and gentlemen. Why are we talking split jerks? It is something that I recently started incorporating in my training on a regular basis. If the weight is heavy enough, instinctively I'm going to push jerk. Because with the split jerk, I can get a little bit deeper underneath of the implement that I am pressing than I would with a normal push jerk or push press, whatever you guys want to call it. If you watch Joe Satmary's channel, he just killed a 360 pound log with a split jerk. Big props to Joey on that one because that is a huge number. He's getting awfully close to 400. Keep your eye on that guy. So, it made me think. If he can do that with a 360 log, why am I not training this more often? Last week, I actually played around with it on the axle and it went incredibly well. Nice. I worked up to a 325 pound split jerk no belt on an axle so i decided this week to change it up and do it with the log because it changes your front rack position because you are a little farther out and see how that goes now i'm doing it with weight that's not heavy but not light something kind of in between moderate weight and lightweight for me 215 pounds that's about 100 110 pounds underneath where my normal log is. So I'm hoping to ingrain that light so when I do decide to work up to it, it's already committed to muscle memory. My working sets for this are actually five sets of three because I don't want to exhaust myself because I know my brace is already taxed from the banded deadlifts and I did that beltless split jerk last week. So I've been doing most of my training beltless the past two weeks. So I definitely feel my brace and my lower back getting a little more taxed because I'm relying more on my brace alone than I am bracing against the belt. With that being said, it's going good. I was really happy with that 325 pound split jerk because that is a number with not really training the split jerk outside of when I was working on it with Joey one, a handful of times. That is really the first time standalone I was really focusing on it and I hit a split jerk PR. I Pretty much everything above 275 was split jerk PR because I just never really worked up that heavy with it So I'm testing it on the log today, but I'm not working up heavy I am focusing on actually getting the split down my brace is a little wonky because it's a little taxed if it's getting tired That means I am working it. It will get stronger. So without further ado. Let's go with some split jerks One of the main reasons why I decided to incorporate more split jerks into my training is because if you ever notice when you were in a comp, for those of you that have competed, especially in, well, in the strongman world, when you have an AMRAP press, it's not really your press that starts to fail so much as your legs on the leg drive. What my body naturally starts to do as I start getting tired is I start to sacrifice my leg drive with more of a drop and shooting underneath of the implement because it's just not there a minute into the event. With a push press, there's only so much you can drop before you're into a squat or a half squat and an overhead squat with 275 pounds on a log is very difficult. Push pressing is faster for reps because you can press down, press under down. Now split jerking is more efficient at getting underneath it because it allows you to drop a lot lower. My game plan or theory is behind this is push press as many reps as I can in competition. And then when I start fatiguing, my leg drive starts to slow down, I'm going to switch to a split jerk to crank out maybe one or two more reps. One or two more reps could be the difference between 
a third place, a first place, or a first place, and a sixth place. Especially at the higher tier shows like Worlds and the Arnold. One rep could mean all the difference in the world. So my strategy is to incorporate that with something that I already do frequently, the push press, and build on that using the split jerk. Now, I, I know I can split jerk. I've done it, I've done it in training, it's there. What I need to do is do it without really thinking about it like I do a push press. When I load the bar heavy, my body automatically thinks push press, push press, Push press, push press, push press, push press, push press. Say that five times fast. Push press, push press, push press, push press. No, don't say that five times fast because you sound like an idiot just like I did. You sound like a jerk. See what I did there? You're welcome. My body automatically goes push press when I get a heavy loaded bar, log, whatever it may be that I'm about to press because instinctively that's where my muscle memory's at. I want to ingrain the option of split jerking so I don't think about it. My body knows, okay, that's what we're doing. We're doing it. When I get say whatever it is five six reps deep and the push press isn't cutting it anymore i want to be able to utilize that split jerk to get that extra rep or two that is the main thing i'm trying to say here it will take more time to do every rep of split jerk and it will probably take more out of you in the long run because it is a bigger motion there are more things going on versus the push press there's something in my eye probably a bug so my game plan is when i'm short on time at the end i know i'm not getting another rep push pressing switch to the split jerk and get one or two more reps out of it hopefully to scrounge out as many points in that event as I can with the press. But I like the way the split jerk training is going thus far. I'm going to continue to do it. I was generally happy with my speed on those five sets. So I ingrained overall good reps, which is what I was trying to do, which is why I did not go heavy. I stayed at a moderate to light weight, but was trying to be fast and hit my mark every single time on the split jerk. Outside of being a little shaky on the brace, I have no complaints. Those of you out there that do come across a press event in a, in a strongman competition, where it is for reps, I strongly recommend you start practicing the split jerk to maybe add on your push press like I'm doing because every rep matters, points matter when you're in that situation. If, if it comes down to one rep between winning and coming in second on an event, hindsight being 2020, you're gonna wish you did something more whether you started split jerking or just had a better press, whatever it may be. The more tools you have in your arsenal, the more deadly you can be, especially come game day. So, and you don't wanna be testing stuff on game day. You wanna be ready. You wanna know it's there when you need it. So that is why I'm doing it now. So if there's something in the future, say there's a press at Worlds and it's AMRAP, I have that split jerk. Hopefully I can figure out my split jerk in time to actually get a log PR with that. But crawl, walk, run, I'm not gonna go jumping into heavy weights and half-ass my split jerk. I'm gonna make sure it's solid before I get there. That being said, I'm not taking my time either. I'm gonna get shit done. I wanted to let you guys in on my strategy for bringing in the split jerk into my repertoire because I hope there's something that you guys can grab from that. I would not be recommending it if, I, if it didn't work. Be well-rounded. Don't be limited to a handful of things. Expand your techniques, expand your horizons because no matter what they throw at you, you're gonna have a solution. I'm gonna leave you with that, guys. Until the next time, you know what the deal is. Get out there, get after it, and embrace the suck.